heart and spirit and join in our communal call to worship. In the gift of this new day, in the gift of the present moment, in the gift of time and eternity intertwined, let us be grateful, let us be attentive, let us be open to what has never happened before. In the gift of this new day, in the gift of the present moment, in the gift of time and eternity intertwined.
and there's a technological stack to boot, but you know, God is good. We're all still here. Um, and we're really glad that you're here uh, for this Celebrate Sunday. Whether it's your first time or your millionth time, we are so glad that you are joining us today. And it's finally here. The big moment has arrived to reveal our spiritual focus for 2023 2024 here at Fairmount. Are you ready? The time is now. Our urgent need for Sabbath. answer these questions correctly. What time is it? Now. now. And what do we need right now? Seven. That's right again. What time is it? Now. And what do we need right now? Seven. You got it all. This is our spiritual focus this year. The time is now our urgent need for Sabbath. And we are going to be focusing on that in many different ways from now all the way through Pentecost. And we'll tell you much more about that during the sermon. But for now, let us take just a few moments to center ourselves in this time, in this place, in this space, and prepare to worship God.
inside it, each according to its own kind throughout the earth. And that's what happened. The earth produced plant life, plants yielding seeds, each according to its kind, and trees bearing fruit with seeds inside it. God saw how good it was. There was evening, and there was morning, the third day. God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will mark events, sacred seasons, days, and years. They will be lights in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth. And that's what happened. God made the stars and two great lights, the larger light to rule over the day and the smaller light to rule over the night. God put them in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. There was evening, and, and there was morning, the fourth day. God said, let the waters swarm with living things, and let birds fly above the earth in the dome of the sky. God created the great sea animals and the winged birds and all the tiny living things that swarm in the ocean, each according to its own kind. And God saw how good it was. Then God blessed them. Be fertile and multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning the fifth day. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living thing, livestock, crawling things, and wild birds. And that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, and every kind of creature that crawls on the ground. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us, so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and everything crawling on the ground. Then God said, I now give to you all the plants on the earth that yield seeds and all the trees whose fruit produces its seeds within it. These will be your food. To all wildlife, to all the birds in the sky, and to everything crawling on the ground, to everything that breathes, I give all the green grasses for food. And that's what happened. God saw everything he had made, and it was supremely good. There was, there was evening, evening, and, and there, there was morning, the sixth Dead. Now the heavens and the earth and all who live in them were completed. On the sixth day, God completed all the work that he had done, and on the seventh day, God rested from all the work he had done. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, God rested from all the work of creation. So what do you think? Does that story from the first chapter of the Bible help you understand better what is Sabbath? What Sabbath then? What did we learn from the Bible? The weekend where you relax. And on the weekend, God relaxed, right? So on the seventh day, what did God do? Rested, relaxed, okay? On Easter, God came alive. Yeah, we're going to talk about that this year, too. All right. Now we're going to get a silly time. Okay. So here's one thing I want to say. Okay, I think you're all right that part of Sabbath is about the end of this story, right? On the seventh day, God rested. But you know what else I think? God, did God create the whole earth and universe in one day, two days, three days, four days, five days? God took a whole week. God took a whole week. God rested every day and said, I'll leave some for tomorrow. So Sabbath is both about that day of rest on the seventh day and also about how we rest in between our work and not feeling like we have to get everything done once. 
So this year, we're going to learn about how to take those rests. All right. Will you all join me in prayer? Will you close your eyes and repeat after me? Loving God. Loving God. Thank you for all of your creation. Thank you for all of your creation. And also for teaching us. And also for teaching us. About rest. About rest. Be with us this year. Be with us this year. As we continue to learn. As we continue to learn. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. all so much for coming. There are worship bags here if you need them and the good Lord is open also.
comes from the Gospel of Matthew in the 11th chapter. Let us continue to listen to God's word to us this day. Are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. The word of God in scripture, the word of God around us, the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Exactly a year ago today, the two of us were standing in this very spot, and we revealed our annual theme last year. Does anybody remember? All right, let's take it from the top. When is it? Now. And where are we? Here. And what are we doing? Here. Come on, I hear the choir. I need to hear everybody else. He's really excited about the call and answer, so yeah. just get, get up. Yeah, get up. he turned the talking on. That's right. All year long, this past year, we reflected on what it means to be present. Present to God, present to each other, present to our community. And at the end of the program year, we spent a few Sundays reflecting back on what we learned and how we grew in our presence keeping. We asked you to fill out some surveys on a few Sundays in May, sharing stories and reflections from a year of now, here, and this. You told us that these practices of presence really resonated with you. You told us that you've also got a hunger to continue to grow in your practice of presence. And you also told us that being fully present is really challenging. And so we asked ourselves two questions. First, how can we level up in practicing presence? How can we go deeper? And second, what makes presence so challenging? What's getting in the way of us being more present? And as the two of us thought about our own challenges with presence, and we talked with church members and church staff about it, we came to a simple but profound conclusion. We're just too busy to be present. We live in a fast-paced world that seems to be getting faster all the time. We're always busy, always multitasking, always trying to check another thing off our to-do list to send another email. So who has time to sit down for coffee with a neighbor or a church member just to get to know each other better? Or who has time to sit in silence in centering prayer for 30 minutes and do nothing? The world is constantly telling us to have more, to do more, to be more efficient, more productive, more everything. And it seems like busyness has become a virtue. But that's not what God wants for us. Remember, God didn't multitask in creating the world. God didn't try to get everything done at once. God rested. And that is what God invites us to do too. God invites us into Sabbath. So what is Sabbath anyway? Well, let's start with what we've probably heard. We've been told that Sabbath is the fourth commandment. Now that just sounds like some rule that we're supposed to follow without really understanding what it even means. Maybe you've been taught that Sabbath is just about doing churchy things, like worship and prayer. As my dad says, Sundays you weren't allowed to do anything for fun when he was growing up. But our scripture makes it clear that worshiping God is only a part of the Sabbath. And many of us think of Sabbath that way, as a list of don'ts. Don't work on the Sabbath. Don't shop on the Sabbath. Don't even think about doing your laundry. But this year... We want to claim that Sabbath is more of a way of being than it is a rule, or a day, or a list of prohibited activities. We want to claim that Sabbath is a transformation from death to new life. That Sabbath is about restoring and renewing right relationships with God and neighbor. That Sabbath is countercultural. That Sabbath is about resetting things to the way God intends. And that Sabbath is about taking a real rest, about learning the unforced rhythms of grace. So, how will we change our hearts and our minds about Sabbath? 
How will we turn our fuzzy and antiquated ideas of Sabbath into something that we actually understand and practice? We want to take you on a tour of the year ahead. Over the next few weeks, we'll continue to introduce some fundamental ways of understanding Sabbath and our urgent need for it. We'll frame this introduction to Sabbath in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Think of it like Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. Preparing to die to a way of life that values productivity and busyness above God and neighbor. Our urgent need to slow down to become more present and to become more attentive to how God is already acting in our lives. And finally, the new life that God brings out of this death. After that introduction in October and November, we'll explore how Sabbath is really about renewing relationships. In the Ten Commandments, as I said, keeping the Sabbath is the fourth commandment. The first three commandments are all about our relationship with God. The next six commandments are all about our relationship with each other. And so you could say that the fourth commandment, the practice Sabbath, takes center stage. It's lifted up as a critical commandment that we must practice if we truly want to love God and neighbor. And so during October and November, we'll explore some biblical texts about Sabbath practices that teach us how to love God. And we'll explore other texts that are about how Sabbath teaches us how to love each other. We're also putting together a worship planning team who will work with our pastoral staff and our music staff to lead worship during this first unit of the year. And there's a sign up in Anderson Hall after worship if you're interested in joining us. We'll kick off this unit with our intergenerational all-church retreat on Saturday, September 30th at the Nature Center at Shaker Lakes. And their kids, youth, and adults will have an opportunity to eat and to laugh, to play, and practice Sabbath together. Later in October, we're partnering with Anshe Hesed Fairmount Temple for an interfaith book study. Together, we'll read Sabbath the World, Glimpses of a Different Order of Time by Judith Shulevitz, gathering twice in person, once at each of our congregations, for discussion, food, and prayer. Finally, we'll also be inviting you to take a midweek sabbatical. Starting October 11th, we'll gather in the chapel on Wednesday evenings for a brief contemplative worship service featuring music, meditative readings, and communion. The first Sunday in December, we transition into Advent, the season of preparing for Christmas. In the life of the church, Advent is meant to be a season of slowing down, of resting, waiting in hope for Jesus' arrival. But in reality, most of us experience December as a season of stress, busyness, and consumerism. So throughout worship in December, we'll pair readings from the book of Exodus with Mary's Magnificat in Luke 1, and we'll consider how Sabbath is a form of resistance. It'll be a season to rest, resist, dream, and imagine. In that spirit, we'll try not to overprogram Advent. Rather, we invite you Rather than invite you to crowd your calendar with more events, which I know you do not need, we'll invite you to consider what kind of Sabbath practices you do need for this season. We will have another cross-congregational book study, this one with our friends at Forest Hill Presbyterian Church just down the road, and we'll read the book Rest is Resistance by Trisha Hershey, who is the founder and bishop of the Nap Ministry. That is correct, the Nap Ministry. I'm super excited. Then as we turn our calendars to a new year in January, we'll celebrate a biblical tradition that comes just once every 50 years, the Jubilee, which is sort of the king of Sabbaths, the Sabbaths of Sabbaths. After Epiphany, we'll focus our attention on everyone's favorite book of the Bible, Leviticus. <laughs> Chapter 25 of Leviticus describes all aspects of the Jubilee cycle. That every seven years fields are to lie fallow, God's people are to rest from work, debts are to be forgiven, and people set free. And that every 50 years is the Jubilee, when everything is restored to the way God intends. In this season, we'll also study Jesus' mission statement in Luke 4, that God has sent him to proclaim the Jubilee year 
has arrived. And together we'll reflect on what Jubilee means for us today as a congregation, on how God might be calling us to practice forgiveness of debts and the liberation of God's people. If you guessed it, there'll be another book study. Finally, throughout Lent, this season leading up to Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday, we're going to be trying to actually live out the invitation of Jesus that we heard just a moment ago in the reading from Matthew 11, to learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Together, we'll reflect on how Jesus showed us that Sabbath leads us away from idolatization, idolization, every time we say <laughs> every time, idolization of productivity and towards rest, away from hurry and towards patient trust, away from our anxiety of scarcity and towards God's joy in God's abundance. And yes, there'll be a book study with another congregation. Beyond our Sabbath focus this year, we'll also offer some other opportunities for fellowship, faith formation, service, and justice. Um, we'll highlight this to you. This fall, we are launching a new small group program that we're calling Sabbath Small Groups. These groups will gather monthly from October through May at a time and location that's convenient for everyone in the group. And the idea is just to build relationships, to discuss faith and life, to pray together, maybe eat together. The pastors will create monthly guides and videos for each gathering, and each group will be self led In October, we'll be hosting a four-week Zoom series exploring queer theology and biblical interpretation, taught by my good friend, Reverend Jonah Overton, who's lead pastor of the Sabbath and Kingdom Church in Milwaukee, and a leading voice among queer, trans, Christian clergy. And beginning in November, we'll kick off a weekly book study uh, that I'll be leading to discuss everything good about God is true, which is a progressive primer on Christian theology written by my coach and former moderator of Presbyterian Church USA, Reverend Dr. Bruce Reyes Chow. Peeking ahead to 2024, we'll host our second annual Mardi Gras party in February. We'll have another silent retreat in March and an all church retreat in April. And if you are a family with young children or youth, there'll be lots of opportunities for you all to engage. Youth Group is back, and it resumes next Sunday. And this year's program will feature four retreats, service opportunities, and so much more. If you have a 7th or ninth grader, our confirmation class is also starting in October. If you've got a young person in your life who may be interested in exploring more about their faith, the Bible, and the church, then this is the group for them. If you know a kid in 6th through 12th grade, Kate Bolden is the person to talk to. We time, or worship enrichment time, will start up next Sunday for children in pre-K through 3rd grade. And most Sundays, these children will stay in worship through the time for young disciples, and then head to the We Room with the teacher and volunteers for conversation and activities based on the scripture readings of that day. And breaking bread Sundays are back. The first Sunday of the month, you'll have an intergenerational, intentional communion service here at 11 a.m. in the sanctuary and online, which will be followed by a meal. Are you excited? <laughs> The people will meet at a breaking bread lunch. 
the ways in which the Holy Spirit is going to show up is already here. And when the Holy Spirit starts dancing around, you can't help but join in. So speaking of Sabbath and the dancing Holy Spirit, you may know that Pastor Lindsay has a sort of mascot for the Holy Spirit, right? What is it? Ooh, whales. <laughs> and perhaps you remember that back in February we held a congregational meeting and you voted to approve a sabbatical for Lindsay next year, a 12-week period of rest that pastors take every seventh year. And our congregation applied for a $60,000 grant from the Lilly Endowment, money that would provide support for Lindsay's sabbatical plans and for our congregation during her time away. The theme of the Lilly grant was, what makes your heart sing? Now, you all know, and if you don't know, just ask whoever's laughing on either side of you. You know that what makes my heart sing is listening to and talking about the Holy Spirit and looking for whales. Well, we've got another big announcement. Drum roll, please. We got the grant! Uh, we're really excited, can you tell? <laughs> You don't need to rush to say your goodbyes. Lindsay doesn't leave uh, for her sabbatical until next August. So we have lots more time to share with you about our plans and her plans uh, while she's away. And there is so much to celebrate on this Celebrate Sunday. We're so excited about the year to come and the ways in which we will be led and experience God's holy Sabbath together. Here we go. Alleluia and amen.
in humility, that you may take them and direct us to use them so that we may find rest and that we may offer rest to the world. We pray this in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. As well as uh, we prepare for our, our prayers of the people, I want to note that uh, Pastor Lindsay and I are joined up here by Sarah Stone and Gordon Landfeld, two of our elders from session, uh, to be present with us as we launch this year and pray for our community. Um, and we do, uh, I didn't ask permission, but I do want to make one joyful announcement on this Celebrate Sunday. I think we have a new baby in the house, right? Yeah? <laughs> we want to welcome uh, Maisie Bassett, the newest member of Fairmount. Uh, so make sure to congratulate the Bassett family, including big sisters Millie and Marty this morning. Please join us uh, as we pray for our congregation. God of eternity, before anything was, before the waves of the ocean swept in and out, before plants sprouted from the soil, before the first living creatures roamed the earth, before anything was God, you were. God of time, in due course, you created us. You shaped us by your love, a love that dwells deep within each of us. And in that love, you called us to care for one another and for all of your creation. So that we might truly see the embodiment of your love and understand the power of your love that resides in each of us. You gave us Jesus as the model of humanity. Jesus showed us how to do the work you have called us to do, feeding the hungry and binding up the brokenhearted, liberating the oppressed and overturning the tables of injustice in our community. And Jesus also showed us how to rest, to receive and to practice Sabbath as the gift of renewal that you so deeply desire to give to us. God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon our church this year, that we may learn from Jesus' way, for the table of your rest that we may slow our pace to match his. That we may learn the unforced rhythms of grace. That we may practice how to live freely and lightly. We seal these intentions and these prayers in our hearts as together we join our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Sabbath here at Fairmount in the coming year. But here's the thing. Sabbath doesn't just happen at church. It happens when we are all out living our normal, everyday, ordinary, and extraordinary lives in the world. That's when we get to practice. It can be hard to remember God's invitation to Sabbath on a chaotic Monday morning. Can I get an amen? amen? And so we want you to have some things that will remind you of this good gift that God gives to us and the urgency of Sabbath in all of our lives. It's what you might call Sabbath swag. We've got the Time Is Now tags that you can put on your backpack, briefcase, or purse. And kids, if you come get one after, we'll bless your backpack for the start of We also have stickers that you can put on a journal or a water bottle or a computer or wherever you are most likely to see it regularly. We've got yard signs. Stick one on your front lawn so we can share this message of rest with our neighbors. We hope that these will be reminders to you that this community is behind you. We've got your back. We've got each other's backs. And God is always with us. And with each other's help, we can practice and experience God's gift of Sabbath. And if you're worshiping online, email me and let me know and send me your address and I'd be happy to put a Sabbath swag bag together for you. Um, so you can pick up your swag in Anderson Hall after worship. There you'll also see sign-ups for all the things we've mentioned this morning and more. Uh, and then we're going to be inside, right? It still looks dark outside. I think uh, we're going to eat inside, so make your way uh, to Anderson Hall. Stick around for fried chicken and sides and dessert. And where is the bounce house? It's the bounce house is in the chapel. <laughs> and there are also more kids' activities, face painting, all of that in one for so, that's all today, but guess what? We're going to be here again next Sunday, <laughs> and we hope that you'll come back. We'll return to our fall worship format with two worship services, one at 8.30 in the chapel with communion, and at 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary, which will be live streamed next week. We're going to make it work. And we plan, uh, oh, we also, I don't know if anybody, did anybody see the video that Brad and I recorded this week? Okay, a few people. It probably didn't make any sense, and we were like, bring your old broken clocks. Now it makes sense. We want you to bring your old broken clocks to remind us of Sabbath and of rest, and we're going to create a whole clocks watch wall in the Welcome Center as you come in. So we hope that you'll bring those things as well. I mean, when we go off to the picnic and the rest of this Sabbath, hear this blessing from all of you. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you, and may God be gracious to you. May God give you the grace to never sell yourself short, the grace to risk something big or something good, and the grace to remember that the world is way too dangerous for anything but the truth, and way too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hands and work through them, and may God take your hearts and set them on fire. Amen.